Hello, it's Father Rich here in my office. I'm here along the uh, kind of the west wall of my office and what I call the vocational part or at least part of it. Um, there's a picture. I actually had a chance to meet St. John Paul II after I served a mass for him in, um, I think it was the fall of 1997 or January 98. Uh, this is actually the my invitation to my ordination, which somebody put together in kind of a display and mem uh, commemorating uh, with praise and thanksgiving, Father Rich Tui ordination 9-7-2001, and then Mass of Thanksgiving 9-9-2001. So a gift I was given. But um, the thing I wanted to focus on is this painting of the Annunciation. And this is by uh, Filippo Lippi. And this was also given to me by my ordination, um, believed to have been done somewhere in, around uh, let's see, 1440. Um, but this is not a masterpiece that we're discussing, but it's in the same genre of the Annunciation. Interestingly enough, they had, um, I knew you kind of figured the Annunciation would be in one of these masterpieces, but I have to say the one that they chose was not one that I was familiar with. So our masterpiece 42 is uh, the Annunciation by Henry Asawa Tanner. And uh, you really should go see it. I don't know. Hopefully that'll give you a decent view of it. But it's really unique. Um, they mentioned that there's no really an angelic figure. It's just a, um, a section of light. Um, Mary is seen very simply, uh, the, very realistically. She, uh, the, the painter, the artist wanted to portray her as being a young Jewish girl in her room. He had gone to the Holy Land several times to see what that looked like. We've heard several of our artists have done that uh, to try to depict something. And she was wearing a, a shawl, the type of sh um, kind of an address or so to speak that um, the poor Jewish women would wear. So, um, so this is, this is from 1898. So the, our last uh, masterpiece of the 1800s and in, in, in portraying this, they mentioned, I thought it was a nice way to summarize it, uh, that Mary is the clue of how to read this moment of revelation, the light which he uses throughout his paintings, uh, very much into using the light. But again, just kind of showing that something supernatural is happening. But um, the author says, uh, as in many of Tanner's paintings, it is through his focus on the figure who is receiving the light of revelation that we begin to understand something supernatural is taking place before our eyes. So we don't see an image necessarily in the light, but rather in how the person receiving it, and certainly Mary, the greatest reception receiver, if you will, of divine grace in uh, allowing the, the, the word to become flesh in her womb by her, her yes, by her fiat. So a great painting, if you haven't seen it, it's actually in the uh, Philadelphia Museum of, Heart in Phil of Art in Philadelphia. Um, so a little bit about Tanner. He was born in Pittsburgh in 1859, he was born to a uh, mother who was a former slave and to a father um, who was a free black. He became a minister in the African Methodist Episcopal Church, very often called AME. They're still obviously around today. He was born right before the Civil War and right in this issue of slavery. And obviously his family was affected by it. But he was still able to be sent off. His, his, his parents and his father particularly uh, felt very much fought for equal uh, treatment and didn't feel like that the blacks should be treated differently in the United States. Um, he was able to send um, T Henry Tanner, also a Tanner, his son to go to the Pennsylvania Academ Academy of Fine Arts, where he was the only black student. Um, so that he, he early on his landscapes were, his paintings were landscapes. They kind of talk about being under the influence of the Hudson River School of Painters who saw the divine in nature. We've talked about them in some of the other artworks. Um, and then his own style emerged. Some of his early paintings, 1893, The Banjo, the banjo 1894, The Thankful Poor. Um, and it kind of gave a window into the experience of African Americans um, and to kind of try to subvert these racial stereotypes that were prevalent at that time. But he also didn't want to be known just as a you know, a, a painter of, as they say in here, you know, a Negro artist, so to speak. Um, and then he wanted to be known as an artist who happened to be black versus a black artist. 
and trying to make that distinction. Unfortunately, he eventually found the United States that almost seemed impossible with the atmosphere. So he ended up moving to France. Um, I forget how old he was, but toward, you know, later in his life, and he ended up staying there. He only returned to the United States maybe four or five times, but really embraced uh, France and Paris as his home. The painters there really embraced him in the way that he had always hoped and just appreciated him for his his talent and uh, skill as an artist and not for the color of his skin. And so, um, but they mentioned he started focusing on religious. He was very uh, devout Christian. He also was Episcopalian from the AME church. So different pictures that he showed. Daniel was one he shows in the lion den. He could really relate to Daniel being kind of almost a foreigner in a foreign land. Remember, Daniel was the Jew in the in the Babylonian um, exile. And so he could relate to Daniel, found a, a big connection to Daniel. It also shows Nicodemus meeting Jesus by night. And really, again, this beautiful use of light in that portrait. Um, so very uh, started, you know, a lot of Christianity, Christian focus in his artwork. And of course, the, uh, the enunciation that he would do would bring that to kind of completion in 1898. So um, certainly, again, an interesting artist in the midst of some of the, the social justice issues in our own country. Uh, but from that, seeing his depiction of the Annunciation in a very human and real way. And so we're grateful for the contribution he made to art and Christian art, particularly. So that's our uh, the Annunciation by Henry Osawa Tanner. Our next one, number 43, will be The Innocence of Father Brown by G.K. Chesterton. Just had a chance to go to England and learn more about Chesterton, who converted to Catholicism. So we look forward to hearing more about him. Hope you'll join us for that. Have a great day. Thanks for being here in this video. And uh, have a great day. God bless.